What is a mole? It's just a quantity, right? It's like a dozen. It's just a quantity. And how much, how many particles in one mole? Afrogadra's number, right? Afrogadra's number. And you can find Afrogadra's number on the information sheet if you don't know it. Now, how did they decide how many particles will be one mole? It's not like eggs where you choose a dozen to make a, uh, uh, 12 to make a dozen. What they did is they, they said, okay, let's take some carbon-12. So they put some carbon-12. This is just theoretically, not, not in reality, but you took some carbon-12. Now, why do they have to say carbon-12? Because you also get carbon-13. What, what do we call carbon-12 and carbon-13? Isotopes, right. They've got different numbers of new, uh, neutrons, so their mass is different. So we had to choose one so that all the mass of all the particles are the same. So we choose carbon-12. And then they said, let's take 12 grams of carbon-12. So if you measure out 12 grams of carbon-12 and put it over there, and if you were able to take your very wonderful glasses and your tweezer and you took out every single carbon atom, how many carbon atoms would I take out? of a Godra's number. There's 6 times 2 times 10 to the 23. That's a lot of particles, right? Now the reason why we work with mole and not with separate atoms is if you look at the mass of a separate atom, it will be a very small number. So you'll always be working with 10 to the minus big numbers, right? Or if you work with particles, if you take a single scoop, you've got a lot of particles. So if you had to work with single ones, the masses would be very small and the number of particles would always be very big numbers. So we work with a mole. Now 12 grams is something that I can see. So it's a nice number to work with. So today everything we're going to do is starting on page 27. So in your notes on page 27, right up there, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at how can I work out the amount of particles. So it depends on what they give you. If they give you mass, I'm going to work with the first equation. They're all on the information sheet. So you can check them on the information sheet. They're all there. So the first one, if they give you mass, you have to divide by molar mass. Now to make it easier to understand these equations, if I tell you I have an egg or, or let's say all eggs, it's not true, but if I tell you an egg is 10 grams, and now I tell you in my hands I hold 80 grams of eggs. How many eggs in my hand? Eight. What did you do? This sort of came automatically with you. What did you do? You took the total mass and you divided by the mass of one. Right, and this is what we do with all of them. You take the total mass and you divide by the mass of one mole. And where do you get the mass of one mole? On your information sheet, right. You look at the uh, relative molecular masses and add them together. Or you take the total number of particles, N for number. You take the total number of particles and you divide by the number of particles in one mole. Or if it's a gas and you're at standard temperature and pressure, you take the total volume of the gas and you divide by the volume of one mole. Can you see you've actually been doing this all your life? But now you have an equation that you can write down. Right. Okay. One catch. Volume. In what do we measure volume? Volume must be in cubed decimeters. So just check that you're always working in cubed decimeters. And then when you get to solutions, you've done that already in grade 10, solutions we're going to work with concentration. That's mole per volume. Now, what's important is there's a volume over there in my gas equation, and there's also a volume over there in my solutions equation. And they must both be in cube decimeters. But now when some learners read a question and they've asked for volume, they immediately go for this one. Because then the bottom is a constant, right? 
you have to check. If you're working with a gas, then we're working with this one if we are a standard temperature and pressure. If you're working with a solution, please don't take this equation. This is not true for a solution. This is the one you have to use for a solution. Right, so you have to determine which one. So you have to read the question, then you have to decide which equation is the one that I'm supposed to use. So this is very basic grade 10 stuff. So please for me, do that first six over there. You have to read the question, determine which equation, and just get the answer. All right, let's quickly look at the first three. The first one, 300 cube centimeter solution. Solution, it's already telling me what I'm going to use. Contains 100 grams of sodium chloride. Calculate the concentration. So the concentration is mass divided by mass times volume. Now, you had the option to do this, to get moles, and then work with the second one. Right. But this combined one is also in the information sheet, and it's faster. So... If you, if you have everything that's uh, necessary for that one, rather use that one, it's quicker, right? So the mass, they gave us 100 grams. Molar mass I got from the information sheet. Sodium being 23 and chloride 35.5 to give me 58,5. And now, what's the catch? Volume. The volume should be in cube decimeters. How do I get from cube centimeters to cube decimeters? Divide by a thousand. So I end up with 0, 0,3 and that should give you 5,70 moles <coughs> per cubed decimeter. Next one. How many moles? So we're looking for moles. We're looking for N. They give us a number of particles, big N. Right, so the moment they give us this, we go back, we find an equation with particles. N divided by Na. So the number of particles, 9,03 times 10 to the 24, what they gave us. And then of a Godra's number, which is also on the information sheet, 6,02 times 10 to the 23. And once you've done that, you get 15 moles of NH3 molecules. Right, last one there. How many mole? We're looking for N. CO2, what do you see over there? It is a gas. And they tell you you at standard temperature and pressure. So immediately, a gas at standard temperature and pressure, I'm going to use N equals V over Vm. So it's the total volume divided by the volume of one mole. 0 0,20 moles of CO2. Right, so on page 27, we've done the first three. You can now continue with the second three to work out with moles the questions that they ask you. Remember the first one is the one that we use when we have mass. It is the mass that they give us divided by the molar mass. Second one, when you work with the number of particles, the total number of particles divided by the number in one mole. Or if you're working with a gas, the total volume divided by the volume of one mole, which is 22.4 when you're at standard temperature and pressure. And then the last one was when you're working with a solution, we're going to work with concentration, is moles per volume, or you can even replace the moles with M over M to end up with that one. And remember, all five you can find on the information sheet. So use them and do the last three on page 27. When we look at this one, they ask what volume, so we're looking at volume. They give you moles, they tell you you've got 2.7 mole, and then they're telling you you are at STP, which is nice, because now I know I'm working with a gas, it's nitrogen gas, 
We are at stand the standard temperature and pressure, so the 22.4 is true. And I'm going to use that equation, N equals V over Vm. So N, V over Vm. The big V at the top is the volume that we're looking for, so I'm going to leave that there. Molar volume, if I am at standard temperature and pressure, that is 22.4, and that is on the information sheet, right. And they're telling us we've got 2.7 moles, so we're looking for the volume, and that's just multiplication, and you end up with 60,48. And the unit for volume? Cube decimeters, cube decimeters. Next one, what mass? So we're looking for a mass. They give us 3.6 moles, that is small n, and the moment that they're telling us we're working with potassium sulfide, they are actually making it possible for us to get big M, right? Which is the mass of one mole. So if you look at the mass of one mole, now what does potassium sulfate look like? Potassium, it's in group one. What does it tell you if potassium is in group one? Everything in group one wants to be plus one, right? So you've got a plus one, and then you look at sulfate, and for that you know your ionic table by heart, and there's two minuses, so you have to take two potassium for a sulfate, right? Because if you do that wrong, obviously then your molar mass is wrong and everything else will be wrong as you substitute. So for this one, if you work it out, you get 174 grams per mole. So every mole is 174 grams. And then we can say, okay, so N equals M over big M. The mass that they uh, want, the molar mass, and the moles being 3.6, and that should give you a mass of 626,40 grams. Right, last one. How many molecules? Molecules are particles. So we're looking for big N, the number of particles, right. And they give us moles, and they tell us it's ammonia. Right, if we're working with particles, you're going to work with that equation. So it is N equals N over NA. We're looking for the number of particles, the moles, 4.2, and Avogadro's number, the number of particles in one mole being 6,02 times 10 to the 23. So then you get the number of particles, 2.53 times 10 to the 24, and that is obviously NH3 molecules. NH3 molecules. Right, so you have to be able to go from mass to moles, from volume with a gas at STP to moles, from number of particles to moles, from concentration to moles, and obviously back again. No? So now we're going to use this. This is the very basic thing that you learned in grade 10, and, and you shouldn't even have to think about this. This is just tools to go on with. Okay, we're going to move on. So now, that is just tools of the trade that we're going to use. If you look on the next page, we're now going to do stoichiometry. Right, and when you look at stoichiometry, it's all about ratios. We are now able to work out one substance, what's the moles, or work back. But now we're going from one substance to another. When the substance given is not the substance that is asked, you need to go, you need a ratio. You have to go from something to something else. Right, now let's take this example. I said, calculate the mass of Na, Na2O that can be produced when 4,93 cube decimeters of oxygen gas at standard temperature and pressure reacts with an excess of sodium. So let's take this slowly. Now, I don't want to teach you tricks. I want to show you just how you can write it down so that you know what you've got. Now, if you look at the equation, the equation always gives you the ratios, right? But that ratios is not mass ratios. You can either say it's particles, one particle will give you, four particles will give you two particles, or you can say four moles of this will give two moles of that. 
So that ratio is actually a mole ratio. So what I like to do is I like to keep the first row underneath the equation to write my moles because they are in this ratio. Right. And then use the second row for whatever they give you or what they ask you. So that it's just a way to write it down so that I can quickly see what I've got and where I'm going. So let's reread. Calculate the mass of sodium oxide. So now I say sodium oxide, what I'm looking for, what they're asking is, they're asking me the mass. So this is where I must end up. I must have the mass. And then they say, can be produced when 4,93 cubed decimeters of oxygen at STP. There's the oxygen. They give us the volume. Right. So what we have to do is we take the volume, convert to moles. That's what we've been practicing before. And then we have one more step, and that is going from one sort of mole to another sort of mole. So the first step is just what we've practiced already taking the volume and making it moles, right? The second step is now the ratio, and that is the important thing we're going to do now. Whenever you go from one type of particle to another, you definitely need a ratio. So here we're going to say we're working with the ratio. We're working between O2 and N2, uh, Na2O. Look at the equation. The equation gives you the ratio 1 to 2. Okay, but this is not what I have. The first one is just according to the recipe, according to the equation. And then what do I have? I have 0 0.22. And then I say, okay, so how much of the Na2 will be formed? And if it's easy like this one, you can just multiply by 2. If it's difficult, you can do cross multiplication. That 1 times that is equal to that times that. So 1 times x will be equal to 2 times 0 0.22. Right. This is not only for science. You can do any ratio in, uh, um, in anything that you do, even if you do um, calculations in, in other subjects. Ratios are ratios, right? So then you get how many moles of sodium oxide is formed, and then they don't ask moles. They ask mass. And now you have to do the mass calculation to go back to the mass. What's important is when you're working with a single substance, that you will do with a single calculation, right? And remember that 2 does not come into this mass. Where do I use the 2 in the ratio? The only place that I use the numbers in my equation is for ratios. It's never part of the mass down there, right? Because if you look at the previous page, if I gave you mass and you had to work out how many moles did we need an equation? No. If you have the mass, you can work out that moles. If you have the moles, you can work out the mass. That's got nothing to do with an equation. It's a substance, right? It's just the substance. So in this one, you're just working with the substance. You get the moles. Then from one to the other, this is a ratio. This is where I'm going to use the one and the two in my equation. And then we go on, and this one they want as mass, so now I'm working with this one. The moles are for sodium oxide, so the molar mass should also be for sodium oxide. And then the grams that I get is sodium oxide. In a calculation, it's all about the same substance, right? So now, you have three, on the right-hand side, three different questions, right? I want you to try to do it this way. So let's do the first one a little bit together, just to do the planning, and then I'll leave you on your way. Calculate the volume of a 0 0.2 cube decimeter HCl solution. It's something that they give me, right? And they're talking about the HCl solution. So... Go to the HCl solution. They're not giving you the moles. They're giving you a concentration of 0 0.2 moles per cube decimeter. Right. And they are asking you a volume of HCl. Right. So this will be where I have to end up. I have to end up with the volume because they ask, calculate the volume. Right. And for the HCl, they give you C. 
is needed to produce 3.36 cubed decimeters of chlorine gas at STP. There's the chlorine gas. They're not giving me moles. They're giving me volume of 3.36 cubed decimeters. But what is nice, it, it is at standard temperature and pressure. Right. So I will start what they give me. I'm going to use the volume to calculate the mole. Then mole to mole, that should be a ratio. Right. And then I'm going to use the moles to calculate the volume. Okay. So now use our planning and do it. It's a one, two, three step question. Easy grade 10 work. See how fast you can do that. They gave us volume and it was a gas and they told us it's at standard temperature and pressure. So for the first one, you will say N equals V over Vm. The volume we've got is 3,36 cubed decimeters and 22.4 for one mole. Right, so the total volume divided by the volume of one mole to give you 0 0,15 moles of. And now, very important, add the Cl2. Because in this question, you are working with different substances at different times. So for you and for the person who's supposed to mark your question, write down, I'm now there. I've got the moles of Cl2. Right. Now, to go from Cl2 to HCl, we need a ratio. HCl to Cl2, they react in, in the ratio 16 will give 5. 16 will give 5. Right. Do I have the HCl or do I have the Cl2? I have the Cl2, so I have this one. It's 0 0,15, and I'm looking for this. Now, here the mass little more difficult, so you will say 5 times x will be the same as 16 times 0, 0,15. That would make it easier. Right, so then you get x. That means there's 0 0.48 moles, and now you have moles of HCl. Right, once you have that, you now know they don't want it in moles, they want the volume of that. So now you're working with a solution. So now it's the concentration one. So concentration being moles per volume. I now know the moles that, that is needed is 0, 0,48. And that, uh, sorry, the moles needed is 0 0.48. I'm looking for the volume and we have a concentration of 0 0.2. So substitution and then you will see the volume 2.40 cube decimeters of HCl solution. Right. Neat and tidy, you know where you're going. Right. And if you, if you make a, 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 a point of planning beforehand, it means even if someone throws down his pencil case and there's a loud noise and everyone looks up during the test, if you go back, you will immediately know where you are. If you've gone confused thinking and no planning, then you have to reread the question and start over afterwards. Huh? So take a little time, think about what they're asking, do a little planning. So let's go on to the second one. What mass of glucose? Now, do you know the formula for glucose? Well, some of you, some of you not. Let's go. Is this glucose? No, you know what that is. Is this glucose? No, you know what that is. Is that glucose? No, you know what that is. Okay, so glucose should be that one. Hey. So they ask, what mass? So moles, mass, we should end up there. That is the question. What mass, right, of glucose will be produced when 100 grams of carbon dioxide? This one, right. And they don't give you moles, they give you? mass. So they give you 100 grams of this. So whatever they give you, you're going to use that to get the moles and then there should be a ratio to go from one type of substance to another and then once again to mass. So it's once again one, two, three steps quickly to get the answer. Do that one and then go on with the next one as well. If you look at number two, 
What mass of glucose will be produced when 100 grams of carbon dioxide reacts completely? So they give us mass, we're going to start with what they give. So for the is, I'm only working with CO2. The mass they gave us is CO2. So if I say N equals M over big M, M 100, whose molecular mass do I need? The mass is for CO2, so the molecular mass, so all show boost for. CO2. So you go to the periodic table and carbon is 12 and oxygen being 16 each and that gives you 44 grams per mole. And then you end up with 2,27 moles and important, write down CO2 because there's moles and there's moles. I want to know which one are you working with. We've now worked out the moles of CO2. Right, to go from one type of substance to another you need a ratio. So we're going from CO2 to that glucose, which is C6H12O6, and they are in the ratio, according to the equation, they're in the ratio. Six of these will produce one of those, six to one. Right, and now I can say I don't have six, I just have 2,27. So how much of that will be produced? Cross-calculation, 6 times x will be the same as 1 times 2,27, and that will give you a 0 0,378 moles of glucose, 6H12O6. Right, so we went from moles to moles, and now from moles to mass. N equals mass divided by molar mass, Mole, moles, 1,378. We're looking for the mass of glucose. And now we have to work out the molecular mass. And I hope you got 180 when you added them all together. Right. So that mass was 18,04 grams of glucose. Did you get a different answer? Yes. Okay. Tell me. Six comma? Sixty-eight comma four. Maybe I just rewrote it. Oh, sorry. Sixty-eight comma zero four. I gave you the answer to the next one, maybe. Okay. Grams. Happy. Sixty-eight comma four, not zero four. Okay, sorry guys, I'll just check it. I wrote it wrong on my memo then from somewhere else. Okay, everyone happy? But the maths is not the difficult part. Are you happy with the idea? Right, let's move on to the next one. Calculate the volume of nitrogen dioxide. So with nitrogen dioxide, once again, they're not asking the moles, they're asking the volume. So you will have to go via moles. Calculate the volume of nitrogen dioxide that will be produced, and fortunately, STP, nice, when, and for this one, they gave you the molecules, right, S there, molecules. So for there, they give you the amount of particles. They stay 1.10 to the 24. This will give you the moles of N2OH4. Then you have to do a ratio to go from one type of substance to another, and then we're going to work out the volume. So we're going to start with this. N equals N over NA. You have 1.2 times 10 to the 24 divided by um, 6,02 times 10 to the 23. And it gives you 1.99 moles of N205. So now I've just calculated the moles. To go from N2O5 to NO2, I need a ratio. Right. Now, back to the equation. The equation tells you the ratio is 2 to 4 or 1 to 2. Right. And I have 1,99. And then you can cross multiply and you will get 3,98 moles of, and now it's NO2. Remember to write down what you're working with. So now we're up to there. And they're not asking it as moles, they're asking it as volume. So it's just N equals V over VM. Moles, 3.98. Volume, 
volume of one mole, 22.4, and now you have to check if my calculator is right this time. <laughs> Happy, 89,15 cube decimeters. Right. 